Hey guys, Talon back with a new video. Uh, we're doing a quick test. Uh, I have a Intel 14th Gen i9 14900K. I got it on launch day from Micro Center. And one of the features that they talked about when they launched a 14th Gen, quote unquote, um, the, the Super Bin 13900K S's, um, was they talked about this Intel application optimization uh, as being a feature. Now, it only works on Intel i7 14700K, i9 14900K, and the F. Uh, KF variants, so the iGPU disabled K variants. Um, and there's not a lot of information about it. Basically, no reviewer showed anything about it. And just last night, I finally got it working. I kind of looked into it and decided to see if I could get it working. And it wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, there's still people having issues with it. So Intel and the motherboard manufacturers really need to get together and figure this out. But basically, uh, it only works in two games right now, and that's Rainbow Six Siege and Metro Exodus. And Intel, basically, I'm sure this is probably within the performance index, probably at 1080p. So you're going to see up to a 13% uplift and up to a 16% uplift in Metro Exodus. I'm actually seeing higher than that from my own testing, but I'm going to demonstrate that to you guys uh, right now. So again, it only works on these CPUs. It is basically a per game application optimization on top of Thread Director, and it works with Intel's dynamic tuning technology that already exists. And then there's a support page for it here on Intel's webpage. And again, it only works in the two games, but it looks like they're gonna add quite a few more games. They said they're gonna add games. This is just the only two games that, they're, 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 that work right now. Obviously, this is very new but there's a very long list of games here that they were probably testing or just haven't released profiles for yet. And then it gives you your supported pro processors down here, the four processors, uh, the i7, the i9, K SKUs and KF SKUs. Um, you do have to get the Intel DTT driver as well. So I got this from my ASUS Apex, not the Encore, the original OG one, but I've also looked all the way back to Z690 motherboards from ASUS and they've published uh, the uh, dynamic tuning driver as well. So this was the big problem right here. You download this and you get a, a big zip file. Um, and then I went through and I ran the ASUS setup and I thought that would be good, but no, that doesn't work. I had to go through and individually, individually right click and install each of the setup like INF files until it finally worked. And once it does, it will add into your device manager. We'll go in the device manager here. Once you finally get it working, you're gonna get a couple things here you're gonna get this in Intel Innovation Platform or IPF Manager and Processor Participation, um, Participant rather, both of these are going to be installed. And the other one that wasn't working for me under software devices, sorry, under, uh, where's it at, where's it at? Uh, is it software? System components, sorry, software components. You get these Intel Dynamic Application Loader, Intel Dynamic Tuning Technology, Intel Dynamic tu Technology, blah, blah, blah. So basically, you get all of these, these Intel Dynamic, I believe it's just actually these two. It's the updater and the device uh, component. Um, I think there might be one more. Now, it looks like that's the uh, the three or the two that you get. So once these install, these Intel Dynamic Tuning Technology device, blah, 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 extension components and the updater component, I thought there was a participant, but that might be the other one that I was just showing you guys. The uh, Okay, so this is the participant. So basically, these four things have to show up in Device Manager or it's not going to work. The other thing you have to do is you have to go into your BIOS, be on the latest BIOS, but it's probably been there the whole time, but it's always been disabled, but you have to go into the BIOS and you have to enable uh, Intel Dynamic Tuning Technology. So that is for the ASUS, I believe it's like under CPU Thermal Management. And so basically you have to go in there and enable that. All right, so it's only in these two games. You got Metro Exodus and Tom Clancy, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Um, both of them do work. I've tested them and you do get a pretty significant uplift. The other thing I tested is I manually disabled my E-Cores to see if it was just turning off E-Cores and it was just like a toggle to do that. No, that's not what's happening. It actually runs far worse with the E-Cores disabled, runs better with the E-Cores enabled. Actually, some games, sorry, it ran better with the E-Cores disabled. Uh, Metro Exodus ran worse with the E-Cores disabled and Siege ran better with them disabled. And then I tested with APU uh, or APO on with the E-Cores disabled still worse performance than with all of your cores enabled and APU enabled. So basically, don't mess with any of your cores. Leave everything enabled the way your CPU is supposed to operate and then turn on APO that offered the highest performance. 
All right, so now that we got that out of the way, guys, we're going to jump in and we are going to play Rainbow Six Siege. I'm going to show you guys the performance uplift um, uh, with APO. So right now, everything is enabled. I've got E cores enabled, P cores enabled, hyper threading is enabled, APU or APO rather is disabled. And the reason you have this, this offer you get from the Microsoft Store. I downloaded that. Just go to the Microsoft Store and search Intel Application Optimization and it will pop up. I think you can actually search Intel APO and it pops up. There's a global optimization toggle here and then individual profiles. So you could have it globally on, but then disable, right, individual profiles. And the reason Intel provides for that is that if you seem to be finding issues that they maybe, or maybe in a game update comes out that breaks the APO, you can then go in and disable that individual per game profile. Uh, you can't just add games from my tab. I've been trying to rename it EXEs. It doesn't work. Intel is going to push these out as the games become available. Um, so right now we only have these two games to test. Now I'm going to test this at 1080p low settings. And the reason for that is I want to create a CPU bottleneck. So we're playing at 1080p. And we are playing at the global overall quality low preset. So just on low, again, creating a CPU bottleneck situation. We're on the benchmark here. I mean, the frames are very, very good. We're hitting over 800 frames per second at times. There is a 540 hertz monitor coming out from ASUS, so 1080p eSport competitive. So you're not always gonna get 800 frames or 500. So if you want to maximize your frames, this could be a very good option for you. Also, it's good to see that they're doing this. They're going to improve game performance by just improving the way that the game uses the Intel CPU, the hybrid architecture. And that's really good going forward as we get more and more powerful GPUs. If we alleviate that CPU bottleneck and can squeeze more processing, game processing uh, performance out of it, that will extend the life of your CPU. Intel could really, I mean, if they are I saw some pretty significant gains using this. If they can get this in a lot more games really fast, this could be a real game changer for them as far as their uh, CPU performance goes. I mean, they basically, it's free performance without IPC uplift and uh, without uh, doing anything other than just going in and tuning the profile for the hybrid architecture. So we scored 667 frames per second, 540 minimum, and 859 on the maximum. Pretty good performance. I mean, I think that anybody would be happy with that performance, right? So 667 frames per second, I believe is what I just said. So we gotta remember that, 667. So we're gonna quit the game. And well, actually it's still doing its cloud sync. Let's let it do its cloud sync. I don't wanna break anything. I shouldn't have to close out of this. I don't think you do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on the global optimization here. And then I've actually got them all turned off. So I'm just going to turn those on. So I forced them on. So I had everything disabled. I wanted to ensure that nothing was happening in the background because I actually have found that even if you turn this off, sometimes it maintains the optimization and still performs well. So it, it, there's something going on in the background and I don't know what it is. I actually had to shut this off and restart the system, come back in, and then you you test it and you get the the proper non-optimized results. So it is definitely something, I think that a system restart is probably best if you're having an issue. So we're gonna go back in and we're gonna hit play again. Now I will test in another video, I'm not gonna do it in this one. I will test Metro Exodus. I also saw a significant uplift in that game. It was like crazy how much uplift you got. Again, I tested it, I think I tested that one at 1080p normal. Um, no ray tracing, anything like, again, that wasn't the lowest preset, but I wanted to test for a CPU bottleneck situation. So we'll hop back in here. We have turned on the optimization. We have it on for Rainbow Six Siege. And now we're going to test the exact same. We had 667 frames or 657, one of the two, on the previous test. Now we're going to see what it does with Intel's APO uh, turned on. All right, show you guys, we are using the exact same settings. Display, 1080p, nothing's changed. 
overall quality low. And we're going to hit benchmark. So you can see immediately we're already getting more frames per second. We're up around 700 frames per second here, where previously we were much lower. 1,070 frames per second. 1,148 peak there. Almost 1,100 frames. All from just turning on this toggle. My GPU is whining right now. The highest I've scored with this, I believe, is 867 frames per second average, which is just insane. I think the peak was like 1170 or 1169 frames. So there is some run-to-run -run variance in the game, but there's not a 100 frame difference or a 200 frame difference. Um, that's a significant change in performance. And you can see it does use the E-Cores a little bit. They are still being utilized here and there. So they're not completely parked. If you park your E-Cores, you turn them off, these would be zero or non-existent. So there is some utilization of the E-Core Whatever they've done to tune this thread director is significantly improving the performance. And it's a repeatable thing. I can do this, I can turn it off, repeat the test, turn it on, repeat the test. 865 frames per second, 1163 was the max FPS. And all we did was go from APO, APO off to APO on, and we gained 200 frames per second basically that is insane if they can get this into more games they could really have a game changer here in my opinion i will test again later like i said metro exodus same it's not 200 frames but you're not getting 865 i think i saw like a 70 frame per second uplift so it was like 430 from like 360 or something like that or maybe it was 320 to 4 I, it, it was still a very significant uplift probably in line with what intel was claiming on that slide um, and this is a, a very significant uplift. So, yeah, if if they, I, I really wish Intel would just tune this for all LGA 17, 1700 hybrid CPUs. There's no reason that this is locked to 14900K, 14700K. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It sounds like they do have to do some pretty fine tuning, maybe at a, even a per CPU, like the, the SKUs changing with the threads being utilized, but... Hopefully, maybe they can expand it to at least at least include the 14600K or maybe all the i9s because, you know, like a 13900K and a 14900K, they're exactly the same core and thread and cache. So there really is no reason to not include it with all the CPUs. It doesn't make any sense. It's literally the same CPU, just super binned. So anyways, guys, that's it. Uh, I just wanted to show you the results, show you in real time that this is real, that this does work by simply turning on APO and hitting go you get free performance i mean that is a huge amount of frames per second that has to be the highest you can get i don't even think you can hit that with an x3d so yeah if they can get this in more games they could really change uh change the cpu dynamic in my opinion all right guys peace out